Yes, they were scared, they were afraid, they were hungry for the maid. Oh, sorry, did not see you there. I was just practicing another one of my ballads. Come in, come in, step right up, grab some dinner, enjoy the penultimate episode of Tales of Theldon with me, Artemis Underhill. We are best friends by now, we've spent so much time together, and yet there is only a little more till our time is over for now, but that is okay, don't you worry. Our friends are about to be dropped into the calamity that has been fallen onto Silver's Keep. But there is light before the darkness in the best possible way. Our compadres, our heroes, are about to meet their greatest and most powerful ally in the whole world. Yet, they may not think that when they first meet him. But that would be spoilers if I were to tell you right away. Please, sit down, get comfortable, get warm, and join us. You step out. The light blinding you for a second with how bright it was. And then your eyes take several moments to adjust to the dark gloominess of the interior of a tavern. Nobody else is in this tavern. It is quite a gloomy place. You can hear beyond the doors. You can hear... Um, the sound of sword fighting in war, almost. There's an. Does amber. this look like any tavern I've been at before? No, never been here to this one before. Have I been to this tavern? No. Oh, once or twice, possibly in your times, depending on which area of um of, of Silverkeep you were in. Okay, so this this isn't the tavern that we started in in uh, no. Ashcroft. No. You can see amber light streaming through the boarded up windows. The smell of the air is musty and still. Dust settles. Nobody's used this tavern for for a little bit now, and nobody's been here to care for it. You step out into the center of the area. I ran. I is anyone in here? Uh, like, well, as you turn center. around, you see a small looks about a, like a boy, a small boy standing on a stool, reaching up to the top of a shelf behind the bar. Oi, boy! Boy, what the oh! F- <laughs> ah! He falls and hits it and lands awkwardly on behind the bar with a thud. Ooh. One of the one of the glasses falls off the side of the shelf as he tried to grab the shelf and smashes on the ground. Ow! Did you honestly? Did you need to, you know, sneak up? How the f- did you get in here? How did you get in here, boy? Bard does what a bard does. I get into taverns either way, even if they've been shut down for a couple of days. You're a bard, Artemis Underhill, at your services. And the little boy kind of picks himself up and bows gracefully to you. Bard extraordinaire and a wonderful traveling companion. You don't look old enough to be uh, to be running any sort of establishment, but I'll have a drink. I don't own this place. Are you kidding? Are you okay? Are no, you, did, I'm not. Did you, how did you get in here? Like the doors aren't even. He no, that's my point. That's why I need a drink. And, you know, all right. Well, I'll have a drink with you then. And he cool, kind I of sit down. puts out three glasses and tips out, grabs a bottle from underneath the bar and tips out three drinks. For four of us, child. He is underage. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sonny, I wasn't going to pour you one. You look like you've barely been out of your mother's bed. What? Well, you know. Oh, do you think, do you think I'm a boy, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, I've been explicit about that a number. Yeah, of times. you have. I just sorry hit my head. Did you see? I fell. I fell a couple of seconds ago because mm-hmm. people snuck up on me and startled me for a second. I don't even know. Look, let's be okay. No, I'm a. I'm what they call a halfling. Halfling. I'm probably older than you, but I'm just you know smaller. We are. Is we are a word? I don't even know. That's never mind. I'm a bard. I can make it up. More we. More we. Hmm, I'll use that in a tale once or twice. Hmm, not be getting a buck for it, though. Anyway, um, so tell me, he kind of sits back and takes a sip out of the um, glass. Tell me, so what are you doing here? Like, you don't seem to be prepared for war, but at the same time, you kind of seem like you'd be all right in a fight. First question, where are we? <laughs> Silver's Keep, my man. So how do you not... Just magic. Yeah. Clearly... Magic. I see. Interesting. We arrived via portal, I believe. 
Portal, fantastic transportation. I only used the portal a couple more times, you know, here and there. There we go. Different planes and stuff. Which plane were you on? Mm, a I different look at the one? other two. <laughs> Maybe this one. Our one? I'm Your sure. one? Are you sure? You don't really use. I don't portals? know. There was That's time a... travel involved, apparently. It's very confusing. That's a bit disappointing. Bit disappointing. Oh, Can well. I have my f***ing drink? It's right there on the goddamn bar. Take it. Oh, thanks. Bloody hell, I'll I'm not going to wait on you. I start drinking and zone out, looking through my book. So he's uh, easy to occupy. Don't Is don't he... you have a book, Cornelius? Yeah, I've got this new book. Should I? Is I there anything start... interesting in that book? Is there anything interesting in that book? Um, yeah, you um, you take a minute just to quickly flick through, and it's all handwritten. Um, some of it's yeah, some of it's in an elvish that you don't understand. You can't. The, the words magically dance around and um, kind of shift and change, but there's several sections that I are... I speak Elvish. Or can I not you read it? You, it's a form of Elvish that... The way Elvish is aged, even without the elves being there, it's kind of become more it's of like a It's like old Elvish. Yeah, it's like Elvish. ye oldy Elvish. Um, where Elvish has become, like, you know, it's been bastardized a little bit to... For commoners to be able to understand it, like American English, to, yeah, American English, you know, putting use, not taking the use away from stuff, you know. Um, you flick through, and there's several sections that are in common, though, um, which is a bit bizarre considering you didn't believe that elves could speak common or use common back then. But the common sections detail um, the creation of the staff, how. Serial had wove in dreams into the staff's core, how he blended in hope, how he blended in light in many ways throughout the core of the staff. It talks about how the wheeler, the wielder at the moment of true destiny, of true adversity, can craft things or create things out of their dreams. And make them reality for a short period of time. But many miracles or many things were created from this staff. The list it weaves and it kind of... It never gets too... Um, it never gets too exact on it exactly. Because when you read it, it's almost as if the author doesn't want to impression you too much. He doesn't want to change the way you think or what you think of. He speaks of the wielder of the staff being truly free of free of thought. Free to craft whatever's in their head without influence. It also talks about how the staff fell into hands of an elf who never dreamed but could only see nightmares. How it twisted the staff, how it almost corrupted the staff, but whatever happened, the nightmares the staff created for that elf were never truly powerful, were never truly created. They were just shadows or images of what that elf wanted it to be. It's somebody who is not free of thought, who is corrupted in their heart, will always have problems and struggles with trying to create or use the staff for their own intentions. Staff seems pretty cool. Or, or really useful. Yeah. What kind of staff is it? Is it like a big, long Gandalf so staff? So it's, it? it's a long staff. Um, as you get to the top of the staff, this pink crystal is almost ro woven around it as it spirals up and spirals out of it um, with three smaller gems kind of encrusted into the side of the spiral um, and these gems seem to spin and rotate of their own accord on the staff I just kind of look at it for a while um is he okay? are they okay? like both of them are well he's looking at a staff really weird and he's just reading well they both started reading books it's those this is a first for me. People not interested in what I'm trying to tell them? Anyway, what the f***? Hello? What? We've been through a traumatic experience. We've, we've just spent uh, some time fighting ourselves in another dimension. So forgive us for feeling slightly off kilter. 
So while you're fighting yourselves sounds completely believable, I believe you, I've heard tales of it all the time, the whole of Silverkeep is in war. There's people fighting on the streets. Many people have left their homes. But it's okay, you've been through a traumatic experience. Completely agree, completely understand. Really bad problem. But you're not the only ones. What happened? Well... What's the date? The date, I don't... Where's my pocket watch? I don't... Well, so about four days ago? Yeah, four days. I was drunk. I was there then. Yep, four days ago. Four days ago, this big voice said his name was Valakar, yelled out over the city saying he was going to attack, uh, kind of gave warning, threatened this place called the Abbey. Scary place. Not going there ever for the rest of my life ever again. Um, and then... There was all hell broke loose, you know, like these creatures started coming out of the walls and attacking people. The His mages started attacking the guards. They're fighting in the streets. You, as you hear this, like the growing of sword and shield and explosions kind of grows in the background. To be honest, it's going to tell a fantastic story once it's all said and done. I, I slam my book shut and say, we know who Valakar is. We led him to the... Freaking reason these monsters are attacking everyone now. Look, if I well, if I was you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go telling random people that. Lucky for you, I am a standing citizen who bends the rules quite frequently. So I completely understand things happen. You just kind of. If, for me, I make a story out of it. I tell you know. You just make yourself the hero, kind of. So. It sounds like the world's ending, so what does it well, matter? I'm sure there's got to be somebody who can stop the world from ending. You know, that's kind of why I'm here, to see who that is, get their autograph, and then tell their story across the entire world. Don't the Holy Guard have those crystal things that stop magic? Yeah, that shit stopped working. I have no idea what happened there. This, like, this creature came out of the walls. It was huge. It was, like, all shadowy and scary and kind of stomped around the place. And, like, ah! and we all, like, all the women and children, like, ran scared. Really bad. But for something to do with that, stop the crystals from working. You know, I almost got caught, you know, helping myself to something and um yeah the, the stuff didn't work so i just managed to zip myself away and here i am getting a drink can you pour me another drink please yeah sure bud he kind of uh he goes to tip you one and then it only a drop comes out Ooh, that's mm, unlucky i'm sure there's another bottle it's a big bar see this was my personal stash the rest <coughs> has been ransacked my friend do you not? Are you not? Did you not carry a flask? Surely everybody nowadays carries a flask, and he winks at you, pulls a flask out of his jacket, and tips you a little bit into a glass. glass. Thank you. I, st- I, I stand up, turn around to my, to my, what I would now consider my friends on this journey, skull my drink, and say, I like bars. I like. Listening to music, I like my life. Who's who's coming? Coming where? To put a stop to this. Oh, oh! I thought you were talking about leaving. Yeah, gonna go kill Valakar. Me, me, I'm coming, and I, uh, I, I can't do I this sober. And... So if anyone finds a bottle on the way out, I'd much appreciate it. But now's the time to kill Valakar. I want to head over to the window and pull one of the boards off and have a sneak peek outside. You want pull the board off? It's not actually that pushed in too well. It's just kind of hastily done. You see a scene of an orange sky with the buildings in front of you. Some of them. Damaged, broken, is and then the sky scattered. actually orange, or is it just because lots of things are on fire? It appears orangey. It appears orangey. Is like it it's daytime or nighttime? Of, it's late evening by the looks of it. So it's partially dusk, partially fire. Yeah, yeah, correct. And you see scattered throughout the courtyards of this big cityscape, men with the town symbols fighting with. Members of the Arcane Circle. 
everywhere. Yeah, let's go. Oi, bard fellow, can I have the rest of your flask if I sign something for you? Because I'm about to be a motherfucking hero in this son of a bitch. Um, right, okay. Weirder things have happened, I suppose. You know what? Tell me this. If you survive this, probably not gonna. That's fine. I've got other flasks. Lucky for me. If you survive this, you come back to this tavern and tell me your story. Why don't you uh, come along and witness it firsthand? <laughs> No, um, you know, just other things to do. You've got your mission, I've got my mission. Things to be, people to see, you know what I mean? Not really. Things to be? No, I, I do not know what you mean. Well, you know, I could be a bard, Please I could elaborate. be a best friend, I could be a lover, I could be a fighter. Many things. Fighter Why don't you come be a fighter then? That would be helpful to us. Yeah, but you guys look like you're capable. You are. Look at those muscles, that there dagger on your hip. That still only three of us. That's so impressive. Like, you guys, better story. There's only one Valakar. Well, seems kind of... Mm. He seems kind of crazy. Am I right? I am I right? Seems a little crazy. little crazy. I was going to go into... Give me your flask. I was going to go down into the slums. Well, here's, here's the flask. There you go. He kinda, Thank you. I snatched it away. Oh, my God. Didn't need to snatch that, honestly. But you I was going to go hop into the slums... And go help some people. They, they've they got it rough down there. So I was going to go make sure everybody's okay. Go grab some more whiskey. Um, Sounds good. You're my Robin to me and I am Batman. Like that play I once saw down in Dwegagong Alley. There was a nice play on called Batman and Wobbin with a W. Wob- and you're, you're, much like the, you're much like the Wobbin in that. I'm, I'm the wo- Wobbin? Really? You're the Wobbin. What alley was that, sorry? The oh. uh, Dwegagong Alley. Oh. I, th- I thought it was. Oh. <laughs> I was fairly certain that's what I heard. Okay. I watched a lot of plays. Mm. What was the I've secret gathered. identity of uh, Wobbin? Maximus Millions. Oh, my version, it had Wick Wason. I thought it was Dick. <laughs> no, no, Wick Wason was Wobbin's real name. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Anyway, we're not talking about this. We can. There will be no more plays for me to watch and enjoy and bring up at random times in bars because I won't be able to enjoy the bars and I won't be able to enjoy the plays if we don't go kill the evil guy trying to destroy the realm, worlds, and many things that I love. And oh my god, this is kind of kicking in. I'm definitely ready for right, battle. Let's I just go. Boot the uh, door should we open. like plan or nope? nope. Okay. I'm just booting the door nope. open in the middle of his sentence and uh, strutting outside. Okay, um, good luck with that. I'll, um... Bye, child. And I follow... Tartam is underhill. Remember that name. I shake his hand before we Thank go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, Artem is underhill. Meet me back here. You'll buy me a drink and we'll tell a story. Uh, I'm underage. I can't buy any drinks. And I walk out. Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at this point, you guys step out into the into the city. You step out um, to see the th- three guards face to face against three sorcerers. The guards hiding behind their shield. So, what do you want to do? Have they seen us? These guards? They're more. They're at the minute. The guards is too much. Too. Like, they're both, at the minute, too busy trying to, you know, the sorcerers are pelting them with, like, firebolts and spells while the guards are kind of hiding behind their shields and trying to move forward before they're pushed back by the onslaught of spells. What do the sorcerers look to be wearing that would, like, is there any information, visibility? Like, they're wearing, like, the same garb that you saw when you were with the Arcane Circle. And what are the guards wearing? Like, the Holy City armor, like, it's banged up to shit, but... Well, here's the way I see it. We can either help the guards and hope we can convince them that we're good in the end, or we help the sorcerers and try to convince them that Valakar's evil in the end. I'm quite happy to just sneak around the whole area, yeah, that, if possible. That also works be. for me. That doesn't work for me. Does the area? Does the area look like? Would there? Would it be possible for us to sneak around? Does it look like? There's it looks ways like. To sneak around? Um, you and uh, you and Cornelius would have a, a fair chance of being able to sneak through, but yeah. a large bronze dragonborn wearing smouldering plate armor, not not too sneaky. Maybe we just run through and then see who attacks us first. 
I mean, if they're so focused on each other, then maybe they... That's not a terrible just idea. Random, um, I'm just going to take people. a couple of steps into the middle of the two of them. And, I, I was uh, going to wait for a counterpoint. <laughs> I was hoping... Are you? Because I'm just moving. <laughs> I put out this plan, but I wanted somebody to shoot it down, so... <laughs> and it's <laughs> or just maybe... The, the hit, straw hit man the, concept, but I just... <laughs> went for it. You know, maybe hit the cons or something, I don't know. You take a step forward. And I sort of announce to them all uh, something along the lines of, we're here for Velika. And I wait for a response from them to see. You uh, hear the, the, they stop slinging spells and the the guards kind of look up from behind their... Uh, <gasps> it's, it's the dragon of the slums. Some of the guards start whispering. If you're here for Velika... Then you must die, or you wish to join us. The sorcerer spits out from it's, the middle. It uh, seems to me like the uh, sorcerers are the hostile ones. What do the guards do? The, the guards, no, w- the guards, recognize me and whispered about how awesome I am. <laughs> and the sorcerer said, "Join them or die," because I'm here for Valica. I guess we side with the guards. I fire a witch bolt off a S three. Okay, uh, roll to hit. Three. <laughs> your um, your witch bolt whiffs, flying through the air and smashing into the building. I needed the drink for the confidence to be here, guys, not for the, conf- the ability to win, you know? Like, it's one or the other, not both. And with that, the sorcerer is turned to die. you. And everybody roll for initiative. Okay, as you spur into battle, you kind of, the air turns to more ash as the fire keeps to pour in and the smoke inhales through the area. All of a sudden, spells start flying towards you. A firebolt comes straight towards you, Charledris, missing. It hits off the side of your armor, almost creating more smolder to the side of it. Another firebolt misses completely as it flies through the air towards Cornelius. Um, Cornelius ducks in response before trying to send off his own spell. The third one uses magic missile. As three darts hit each of you. Dealing two damage to Cornelius. One damage to Chalidris. And one damage to Leaf. Ah, a flesh wound. And then Leaf, it's your turn. In an attempt to redeem myself, redeem myself, I'm just firing Witch Bolt at number three, S3 again. Okay, going all that with the spell. Uh, 24. 24, that's a hit. As you do, you send back and retaliate a shot, and you blow off the arm and the side of the mage who spirals back and forth on the ground. I'm just going to sprint up to S2 and give him the old one too. Not going to lie about Here it. Him. The old one too. The old one too. He wants. Uh, I'm gonna actually go for like towards trying to break his collarbones initially, like one on each side with the old okay. with the old one too. Uh, as you you sprint up, um, sp- spiraling out your whips to either side as you sprint up and slam them down on the collarbones either side of the um, teenager almost in front of you. You. He crumples his legs like break from within from beneath him as he crumbles to the floor bleeding out on the floor uh, I go to Sorcerer 1 I think uh, maybe you should answer our questions did you see your two buddies get uh, mercilessly murdered like taken down really bad there was a lot of blood maybe Mercif- could, uh... mercifully murdered what are you talking about no I'm you not didn't good with worse. you didn't mercifully do anything what the hell are you bloody thinking about we are just trying to, you just want to, uh, uh, uh. Okay, just, just just take a couple of deep breaths. In, out. There's a lot of blood. In, out. Uh, uh, a lot of blood. Uh. Uh, just tell us where Valakar is and uh, maybe we let you sneak out of the town. We won't is tell it- anybody. Roll a deception check. Sixteen. Yeah. He's in. He's in the main buildings up ahead, across the courtyard. He was. Um, 
he was with with the arch the 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 the, the grand chancellor man of the city. That's good. Was it's good. That's trying good to finish him. Is it? Yeah. Did he yeah, have really? a staff with him? By any chance? Uh, yeah, of course he has. He, he's got a big staff. Sizable staff. Did you see a kid with a... Like, who used to always be around with another kid, but the other kid's not there anymore? Yeah. I wonder what happened to that other kid. Is that other kid the the first kid I was talking about with the Malachar, or...? Well, I don't know. You said there was two kids. I don't know which kid it was. What is going on here? I'm trying to find out if, uh... Ransom is... Oh, I'm aware of what's going on. I just killed someone. Chubba Barbadars just killed someone. There's three guards over there just standing with their hips, their hands on their shoulders, confused like we are. You two are over there having a merry old conversation. Do you want me to make you a cup of tea? Something? Jesus. I mean, can you do that? No! Okay. Can he... F- off? He was being sarcastic, okay. child. Sorry. Uh, thanks. Maybe you should, uh... Run away before. Don't say thanks. Don't say thanks. And don't say cool. And don't say thanks. They threaten okay? to don't kill thank us. the bad guys. <laughs> Even when they give you information, well, don't say thanks. It's uncool. Your intel is appreciated. You should go off now. God. Is that spot on? Is that, was that Cornelius? Good? Spot on. Um, I, was can, an I can leave. I can, I can leave, right? Yeah, before the guards get to you, that would be a good idea. Leave! Okay! And he runs down the alley past the two houses. Oh, so you could just letting him go, I guess? Oh, um... Um... The guards kind of, like, relax. <sighs> to be honest, I'm a bit too tired to chase after him right now, anyway. Thank you, whoever you two are, and... Thank you, Charlie. Just welcome, welcome back to the city. It's good to be home. Are you guys uh, are you guys helping us out here? Or are well, we good? Yeah. We- Aren't you like the general or something? Car, like, can't you just order them to come with um, us to help? No, you you I, can't. You're not anything to do with us, didn't you? Yeah, I thought run I was off in and the go. other army. Didn't you run off and go and uh, start another army? I did, yes. Something? Yeah. That's, um... But for old time's sake, you know, guys. I could certainly yeah. try. We're uh, we've got this uh, common common enemy. We I did, guess. yeah. Common we enemy. we well, just we saved can, your we lives, can, and we like, have this common we can, enemy. We can like work with you guys, like as we could like fight. That's what I'm saying. If you just want to come with us now, like we could f- for this particular like fight time parallel together, like not together together, but being like in the same place. But like yeah. we're together and not attacking each other. Yeah, yeah. And attacking like, the same know, people, like but the we're same not together. People. In our own areas, parallel to one another, not together, though. Yeah, and you're not going to abduct us afterwards and stick us in that abbey afterwards, are you? Yeah? Um, yeah? Your silence is deafening. The correct answer to that question was no, you are not going to. Uh, No, but didn't... Did you see those two sorcerer guys? No, but he, like, worded it... He worded it so you're not going to do that. So yes is the appropriate answer to the question that you proposed to us. No, it's not. No, no is so no, you it's said, not. No is no, the correct not. response. No, no, I but will yeah, not do it is. That. No, it's, it's not. Correct. Yes, no. I will not do that. You're not gonna. Yes, I will not while do I, that. While we're having this conversation, mm. can I make a uh, Benedict my owl reappear? Where has you, um, he been? Because I forgot that he was a thing until I saw the pocket picture. dimension. Oh, you, um, <laughs> you concentrate and above your head, spinning out of the air, becomes Benedict Alley Batch. Cool. Can I get him to have a look around the area? Yeah. See you, how many... um, you see through his eyes as it flies around, various small battles being occurred. You see a standoff with sorcerers ga- gathering around the main entrance to the main capital buildings of Silver's Keep. You keep spiraling around to see different smaller skirmishes um, happening all over the place. Different series. The guards seem to be losing. The guards seem to be losing, guys. We should uh, start moving if we want to have more help. Okay. Right. 
What's the qu quick? What's the quickest route to get there and dodging the most sorcerers? No, nope, that sounds like a bad idea. We've got to kill all Why the sorcerers. Why do you not want to dodge the go. sorcerers? We want to kill all the sorcerers. No, but if we don't get there fast enough, then we're dodging the small battles to get to the main battle. Mm. I'm going to bust a move right up to S4 and help out old G4 up there in the middle of the courtyard. You, um, all of a sudden, Charlie just looks at the ground and then looks up into the sky and then all of a sudden bursts into a sprint. Out past the burning carts, past the buildings, and into the courtyard. Um, is there anywhere along the way where I could, like, grab, get behind something in that's, you know, cover where I w wouldn't be seen straight away? Because he's just ran out into the open. Like, is there a, something something I can duck behind where I wouldn't be seen al along the way, close to where he is? Not really. Other than these, like, carts that have been pushed in front of um, the area, you guys, it's kind of an open open battlefield almost I don't, I'll just run behind I'll run forward but stay back for a fair distance and fire off my bow at S4 can we, can we right up close to that house there's a house right off to the yeah can we right up close to that the house closest to them yeah, yeah and then I'm gonna fire an arrow at S4 so with a sigh you kind of you resign yourself to what's happening and half jog half run um, out past, leaving Cornelius alone with the three guards. No, I follow as quickly as possible. You I don't want to be follow left alone. quite behind, not wanting to be left alone with the guards. You run forward, straight through, joining Leaf against the house. So once he's finished, I'll fire a fire bolt. Yes. The arrow flies forward, uh, or bolt, because crossbows don't fire arrows; they fire bolts. Uh, the bolt flies forward, stabbing into the uh, sorcerer in front of you. As the same time, Ashley launches off a fireball and he's running across to join you, hitting and smacking number 14 in the side of the face. Alright, what we're going to do, roll one last to, roll one last initiative. This is going to be your initiative for the rest of... There. So this is going to count for, like, one, if we kill them, then we're not breaking battle for them. We're not breaking... Well, we're not breaking battle, but even if you go in and out of battle, I'm not going to have you, like, roll initiative for every little battle. Uh, and with that, uh, Chili, just you can do an attack if you want. I'm going to uh, go around G4. Uh, yep. You... And I'm going to go for the same same tactic because that worked quite well last time. Nice. And aiming to going... rip the uh, teenage wizard's shoulder off, shoulders off. You spin around uh, past Guard 4's guard and shield. And you slam down again on the collarbones of the um, sorcerer that's trying to fight hand-to-hand -hand with. He crumples again at your feet. The guard kind of collapses to one knee. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, rally your friends. I'll get them out of their own battles and then we shall go. Uh, we have just saved a bunch of people. Uh, G's one through three back there, if you could uh, bring those units up to help too. As you've said that, they've actually come running out themselves um, and rejoined the battle in different areas. I move forward a little and launch an arrow at S13. Okay, you um, you fire the bolt off. 11. Uh, mm -hmm. You miss. Let's see, it ducks under. Uh, you each run up, uh, prepared to battle as they all turn to face you now, ignoring the guards behind them. I would like you all to make a dexterity saving throw for me. As a small like fireball begins to grow in his hand, he throws it down. So anybody who didn't beat 12, each takes 13 damage. If you uh, above over, if you got over 12, you take half that amount. Cornelius, it's your turn now. Okay, I'll run as far forward as possible. And then I use Thunder Wave. Are any of the guards going to be in the... No. No, no they're, they're just at yep. a range. You're going to hit all three of them. Yep. Um, except for number 11, you'll be missing. Yeah, he's just out of... I can't, I can't maneuver in a way that hits him as well. Or... Um... Or if I use yeah, if you take a step to this side. So you see Cornelius run out, run towards the fountain, stand in a spot for a second and then kind of think, and then just takes a little bit of a step a couple feet across. Uh, so they need to do uh, constitution saving throws? Yes. What's your spell save, DC? 14. 14? Okay, they all failed. They all go flying back 10 feet. Um... A lot of their like clothing like rippling or getting ripped in sections as you slam your foot against the ground the part of the fountain actually breaks and water comes spilling out 
the one you know is number five somehow, runs up, runs through pushing past, um, and prepares to slam down against you with a dagger. Uh, so dealing four damage to you is the dagger finds purchase, scraping against the inside of your arm. I will down a lesser health potion. As you down the health potion, anger drives through um, one of the men's eyes as he runs towards you, wh- whipping out a dagger and then slashing it down towards you. It hits, scraping the inside of your arm, Cornelius, and you feel the rush of blood start f- flowing out. Eldritch Blast at S13. You focus the energy into your hand, growing into a ball, and prepare to throw it um, towards S13 leaf. The firebolt makes impact, burning up and like scorching part of his robes, uh, but he rights himself and stares you blankly in the eye. S12 is going to throw a firebolt at you, Chalidris, uh, which will hit five damage. And another firebolt goes flying over your head, Cornelius. You manage to duck in time. Uh, and then, Chalidris, it's your turn. Uh, I've got to take like two steps to get to 13. Can I actually get myself in between uh, the 12 and 13 who are up this end by me? Yep. In that case, I position myself in the middle and then start a kind of whirlwind type attack with my... Uh, you whips. run up and you uh, begin the spinning motion releasing the whips into the air. Um, you make contact with both of them. Uh, you feel the first one make a sudden impact and hard against the body. The second one is you feel it make impact, but then you realize um, it managed to duck out of the way and you struck at the ground but uh, next to him. Roll your damage for your first one. Nine. As you do, you manage to you send the body flying across the courtyard. It skids on the floor bouncing across the way. Um, as the second one looks grimly at the body and then looks back up at you preparing to attack. You can leave, child. I am not your child and I do not need to listen to you. Prepare to die! As you say this, uh, Cornelius. I say to the guy in front of me, we're both magic users, we we could be friends, right? He uh, swings at you again with the dagger. You dodge out of the way as he uh, ferociously tries to attack. Okay, I use shocking grasp. You reach out as almost... It's almost monk-like. It's almost like... You'd have no idea. You manage to reach... You try and reach out as his arm swings past you from the dagger strike. Almost trying to, like, push it out of the way and shock him at the same time. Roll to damage. You, um... You feel the... The lightning energy pulse into his arm. He, like, jolts back and, like, holds it to one side. Um... Preparing to brace himself with the dagger attack afterwards. Um... After that, it is his turn. No, I book it. Okay. I book it towards the guards, and he can't react. He cannot react. Yeah. I say, hey, uh, oh, we're on the same side. We're on the same side. They look at you confused. And what have you been doing? You've just been standing there this whole time. We like, have everybody to attacked once, and just, you we, haven't done anything. If we move out of position, they will enter the gra- the grounds. But if you, you seem to be holding you, yourselves you, pretty well. I mean, if you if you stop them, then they won't come in. I mean, have you seen I mean, how many there are? I mean, there was only three or four. We I took out a couple. My yes. buddy over there seems to have taken one out. Yes, there's been three or four that we've been protecting from for the last four days. Every time we fell one, another one comes. That's been happening for four days. I mean, you could throw a spear, or uh, you've got some crossbows, or... You you look over at each one, and they look absolutely (laughs) exhausted. They look like they... feel a bit guilty now. (laughs) ...stood in these spots since the attack started. You want to maybe put your shield in front of me a little bit? That'd be really nice. He, like, limply holds his shield in front of you. And with that, uh, it is now his turn. He chases after you with the dagger, Cornelius running at you from the, the shock of coming. As he runs towards you, all of a sudden, two spears come out from around you, stabbing into him. Yes! The mage kind of sticks himself on and then drops to the floor. Dead. <laughs> that wasn't that hard. Good work! Uh, was that number 25? Or was that 125? I don't... I, uh, don't. I, I don't know, I just got here. Oh, you just... Eldritch Blast 
at S14 just off to the side in between the two guards fighting. No, he manages to duck out of the way as it smashes into the wall of a building next to him. Sorry, house again. It's okay, Leaf. We good. I'm way too drunk. Yeah, I'm going to give number 12, who's standing behind me, the old one too. Spin again, whipping your whips, your nine tails through the air, the dragon heads glistening with blood as they flail towards... And deal 17 damage. 17 damage. Fail towards ripping into the skin of the face of the mage before That'll you. That'll do. As he falls. I can, I'm can. i going to go stand next to the fountain um, by Cornelius in G14 and 15 and then take a lesser health potion. You, um, you take the health potion and with that, you... The three of you spend the next four hours fighting. And this waves and waves of people keep bursting through. The guards kind of come closer to you, all defending at the front of the palace. You keep felling mages and they just keep coming. They keep throwing more. Maybe we should uh, go inside. We can't. They've blocked off the interiors. I'll rip in the door. You walk up to the doors that are about 10 foot high Mm -hmm. um, with these insignias emblazoned into the doors and cut across. Um, They're glowing in energy. Do I see any other entrance into the... Like a window up above? A lot of these, the windows and the doors have these glyphs on them. You know that it's like a ceiling magic that... Uh, repels attackers. Um, you know that it wasn't cast by anybody of the Royal Guard or the the people of Silverkeep. It seems to be... It, it almost feels like the energy that Velikar would have exuded when you were in his presence. Oh, right, Cornelius, come here. Come here. Yep. Like, finger him over to my side. I <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I use my hand to point him towards the direction of me to stand by my side. I look at him weirdly and then do it. This, these are sealing spell some sort. Now, who do you reckon would have cast this? Darker. Correct. And what do you reckon he casted it with? His magic. But specifically what? Pay attention, boy. You think he is the staff? Is what you're trying to um, you're trying to get at, right? Yeah. All right. I ch- grab the staff and I try to dispel the magic seals. I wave the staff around, think it'll do something. You wave the staff around. You let your magic flow into it. Wave it faster. The energy kind of builds up and starts. The gems on the staff start to exude with power. Vroom, 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 vroom. Faster! 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 <laughs> Faster! And then all of a sudden the energy just kind of dies. <sighs> okay, that didn't work. Isn't isn't the power of the staff that uh, it brings your dreams to life? Or anything that you can dream? I, I don't have time life? to go to a heaven now. I don't imagine you have to dream. I, I wonder okay, if you I just was, have to think a, hard it enough. Was, it was a close joke. Close your eyes and concentrate. Okay, I close my eyes, concentrate, and imagine the doors being open. disappearing. Once again, boom, 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 I sit down on the, gr- I sit down on the ground, wa- worn out from the hourless, the hours of battle we've just been doing, and start drinking what's left of the. Maybe we should ask one up. of these sorcerer guys to open the door for us, or maybe we should let them in, and then they, they want to get in, right? The guards now. It's, it's getting dire. There's only about a small dozen, a small handful to a dozen of guards left defending you from the growing forces of sorcerers. The sorcerers are gathering together now. All of a sudden, the voice of Valakar rings out over the city. To you who are here, my loyal followers, remember... We will win this war. We will drive them from their city. And we will create a new world. A new world with me as its ruler. 
Now bow before my creations! And all of a sudden this dark energy flows from a point at the top of the palace. It flows down and starts to take form amongst all the mages. Claws appear. Dark skin. Red eyes. Large teeth. It begins to stare at you. But then, as it does, as the sorcerers begin to close in on your last guards, you hear a sound. A single, perfect sound. A horn cuts through the air. Everything dies silent. The mages start looking around. An erupt of cheers and yells and war cries rips through the air as the as a, a legion of horses ride into the city, smashing through the hordes of mages, smashing into the creatures and creations, smashing through. Everybody, roll a perception check for me. Chalidris, you see. On each of the men as they charge into the area fighting. The symbol you are quite familiar with. The symbol of the Gilded Fist. My man! Leading the charge. At the very front on a massive war horse in shining armor. Is a half-orc. The half-orc you know is Grimhook. And then amongst them. Is. This very large crowd of burly men. A half-elf among them bounces between it. At their head is a very large orc. Or ah, half-orc. It's the Hunter's Lodge guys. Yeah, the Hunter's Logs appear. Oryx amongst them, fighting through. The tide of battle changes. The war turns into your favour. And then all you hear in the wind as the wind passes is a female laugh. Leaf, you feel a burning sensation in your pocket as you look in and you see that coin with that damn man's stupid face on it burning into your hand as it disappears. Where'd it disappear to? It just kind of faded away. Oh, I thought it melted into my hand. Scary. No. no. The battle is over before you know it almost. Fighting seems to just come to a halt. As many mages realize the tide has turned. They still look up to the palace, which has still got those glyphs on it. And the... The rest of the city is, is in your control. Seems like a victory to me. I'm tired. We haven't done anything for the last of it. All we did was watch. No, we didn't. Yeah, but we spent four hours fighting before yeah, that. We were battling for yeah. four hours. Yeah, but then we had a rest watching them wipe out. No, the that rest. was like five seconds. They came in, they ran everybody over, and so. Uh, yeah, they literally just busted a move in. I think that was longer than five seconds. Was it? It was like an. It was a couple hours still. Was it but sufficient? It oh, well, <laughs> and you guys were. Hands. You guys were. We were fighting involved. that whole time. We're not lazy. I wasn't. I definitely <laughs> well, was. Well, that explains that we would have been. We could have been finished. It turned into night, and then the dawn starts breaking through. Many mages, though. Many of the. Holy Guard have put gone up to the Gilliffs trying to see if they can defuse the situation, but their magic doesn't work. You hear the voice of Velikar again. <sighs> you think you have ruined it? You think by winning some silly battle outside, you can stop me and stop what I desire? Nothing will stop the new Lawmaster's desire. <laughs> I don't know how you stopped my creatures. I don't know how you stopped my men. But 
it is time for you to prove yourselves an enemies. This evening I will open the doors to this palace. Your leaders have not been harmed yet, but they are under my control. Send in your champions, and only your champions. Choose those who will face me, and then, then we shall fi figure this out once and for all. You stand in front of the palace doors with Oryx, with Grimhook, with several companions here and there, as they each look up to the doors. And that is the beginning of the end. What a cliffhanger! What lies beyond that door for our heroes? And can they make it through? Will they live? Will they die? There, we'll be fine and we'll be excited to know exactly what happens behind that door. Next week on Tales of Theldon, I expect to see you here. Our journey is close to the end, but we still have a long way to go. I'm excited. Are you? The Tales of Theldon is an Explosion Network production. Written by Kieran Marchant. World and scenario by Kieran Marchant. Played using 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Sound mixing and post-production by Dylan Blight. Music and sound effects resources available at explosionnetwork.com. Cast of characters. Dylan Blight as Leif Estel. Ashley Hobley as Cornelius Bannister. Thomas Marshall as Chaledrus, with Kieran Marchant as the Dungeon Master.